Hi everyone, it's me, Spring, the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. Today is going to be a Tunisian stitch tutorial, and the stitch is called the Brocade Stitch. It is fun, and um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So for today's tutorial, I am using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook that I have purchased through Timu. In the upper right hand corner will be a card that will take you to the video of the review of these Tunisian hooks that I purchased. I'm also using two colors. You have color A and color B. Color A is this mustard gold color and color B is this red velvet burgundy wine color. Now you can use Two solids, you can use a solid for color A and a variegated or self-striping for color B. Um, it is a one-sided stitch pattern. This is the front, which gives you this really cool dynamic look. And this is the back of your work. So the multiples that you will need is 10 plus two. In the swatch that I have before you is a total of 32 stitches. It is wide enough to do a uh, scarf at this point. It would be very nice wide. And that I'm using is a yarn bee yarn from Hobby Lobby, and it's called Tender Touch. This is the mustard colorway. Um, these were on the clearance sales so they may not be available in these colors anymore it might be difficult to find these colors if you're looking for them particularly um, they are a hundred percent acrylic and they are a five weight give or take um, a heavy four so what we're going to do is go ahead and work up on this particular swatch, starting with row one. So you're going to chain um, in multiples of 10 plus two. So you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and continue to chain until you have the multiples that you are looking for. Once you have the multiples that you are looking for, remember that in Tunisian, that loop on your hook counts as your very first stitch. And what you then will do is go into every chain and yarn over, pull up a loop. That counts as a stitch. You're gonna continue to work across your row, picking up those stitches now, once you have reached the end of your row, you should have the same number of loops on your hook as chains you chained. So I should have a total of 12 loops for this particular chain that I have in front of you. Now, I'm just giving you the start here as to what to do from a chain. I'm gonna move back over to the swatch that I have here in front of you. And we're gonna do the same thing, pretending that this first row here is my chain. So I have color A and I'm just going to pretend this is my chain and I'm gonna pick up every stitch all the way across. When I reach the end, I should have a total of 32 loops on my hook for this swatch. I'm gonna go ahead and work all the way to the end of my said chain and meet up with you at the very end. Once you have reached the end of your chain, you now have the same number of loops on your hook as chains you chained. Now we're gonna complete our Tunisian reverse pass or back pass. You're gonna yarn over and chain one, and then yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go through two. And you're gonna continue that until there are two loops left on your hook. Once you have reached the end, I will meet back up with you. 
Once you have completed your back pass, you will have two loops left on your hook. This is when we add in our contrasting color or color B as we're going to refer to it. Color B, you're gonna yarn over and pull a loop through. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that you leave enough tail when you do that to weave in at the end. So now we're gonna start with row two. Row two, you're gonna chain one and we are going to place a double crochet, Tunisian double crochet, into your next stitch. Now we're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. One and two. Now we're gonna Tunisian slip stitch the next two stitches. So just sliding your hook under each of the next two stitches. They are considered worked at this point. Now we're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. When doing so, you're gonna wanna take care of that bar that you're gonna create on the back side of those slip stitches. You do not wanna make it so tight that it bunches those slip stitches together, but you don't want it to be so loose that you have a big loop hanging behind your work. It takes a little getting used to. So Tunisian simple stitch each of the next two stitches. And that's what the bar behind it should look like, not super loose, and not super tight. Gonna Tunisian simple stitch that second stitch. And now we're going to Tunisian double the next four stitches. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops. We're gonna repeat that three more times At this point, we're going to begin our repeat. Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. Slip stitch your next two stitches. So Tunisian slip stitch. Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. And Tunisian double each of the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And continue with the repeat. So where it's low in the pattern, where it's low like this in the pattern is where your doubles will go. As we move on, you will see it happening in your work as well as in front of you here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this row. Tunisian simple, the next two. Tunisian slip, the next two. Tunisian simple, the next two. Coming up to my last four stitches, and I'm gonna Tunisian double each of the next four, the last four stitches. So I'm yarning over, inserting my hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over and going through two to complete that double. I'm gonna do that three more times. When we come to the very last one, our edge stitch, you're gonna make sure that you're turning it on its side and picking up both legs of that stitch. So 
both of those legs and yarning over and pulling through both of them. Yarn over and go through two. Now we're gonna complete our reverse pass, our back pass. You're going to yarn over and chain one, and then yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. You're gonna continue doing that. When you come to your slipped stitches, you're going to treat them as individual stitches as they are. So yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, which includes one of your slipped stitches. Yarn over, go through two, and that's your next slip stitch. You're gonna continue doing that all the way to the end where you have two loops left on your hook, at which point I will meet back up with you. Once you have made it to the end, you should have two loops left on your hook. You're gonna pick up color A and yarn over and pull through those two loops. Now we're starting our next row, row three, with the proper color. For row three, you're just simply going to Tunisian simple stitch every stitch. So from this point out, color A is Tunisian simple stitch every stitch. When you come to your slipped stitches, you're gonna work each one of them individually. Continue to work across to the end of your work, Tunisian simple stitch every stitch. You should still have 32 loops when you reach the end. So I'm coming up to my last stitch here and it is a double, so you wanna make sure that you're not going into the bottom of that double. You wanna make sure that you're going into the top of it. It is treated exactly the same. You're gonna turn your work on its side here and pick up both legs of that stitch. Yarn over and pull through both. And now we're gonna complete this row with our standard Tunisian reverse pass. And we're gonna end with two loops remaining on our hook. So chain one, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, and continue working that repeat until there are two loops left on your hook. Okay, I've made it to the end. We are now gonna start row four we're picking up color B, yarning over and pulling through. We're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. So Tunisian simple, each of the next two stitches, three loops on our hook now. Now we're gonna work the four Tunisian doubles. So yarning over, going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops. You're gonna do that three more times. Now we're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches, one and two. Now we're gonna Tunisian slip stitch the next two, so inserting our hook under both of those stitches. Tunisian simple stitch, your next two. And then we begin with the four Tunisian doubles. So one Tunisian double in each of the next four stitches. And now we're going to continue repeating Tunisian simple stitch your next two stitches, one and two. Tunisian slip stitch the next two, one and two. Tunisian simple stitch the next two, one, two. And Tunisian 
double the next four stitches. So each of the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Continuing to the end of the row, we're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches, one and two. And now we have three stitches left at this, at the end of this row. You're gonna Tunisian slip the next two. Then we're going to Tunisian simple the last stitch. Make sure that you get both legs of that stitch onto your hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we're going to complete this row with our reverse stitch. You're going to yarn over and chain one. Now yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. And continue that repeat all the way till there is two loops left on your hook. When you've reached the end, you will have two loops left on your hook. We're gonna pull color A back up and let's begin row five. You're gonna yarn over and pull through those. And as I said before, your color A is Tunisian simple stitch only. So you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the entire row. When you've come to the end, I will meet back up with you and we will work the reverse pass together. Okay, so I've picked up all my stitches. We're going to do the reverse pass now to finish up row five. You're gonna yarn over, chain one, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, and you're gonna continue that repeat all the way until you have two loops left on your hook, at which time you will pick up color B and repeat rows two through five. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you need any additional help, please let me know. Down in the comments section, or email me. All of that information to contact me will be down in the description box. I also will insert a playlist for Tunisian stitches and there are also projects, patterns, free patterns, Tunisian style, that you can find in multiple different playlists. They will all be labeled as Tunisian cowl or Tunisian kitchen, things of that nature. Whoops. There we go. Okay, now I'm set up to start my rows two through five. And for this, as I said, you can use many colors and different weights. Uh, try to stick with the same weight uh, for one project, but um, you can use all kinds of different things. For this particular pattern, you can make all kinds of things using it. You can do sweaters and hats, um, bags, slipper socks, blanket panels, um, a whole blanket depending on how long your cord is. Um, you can do all kinds of things. You could even do this in um, cotton and make a table runner. You could make uh, floor rugs if you wanted to. Uh, it, the ideas are absolutely endless. This is just a stitch giving you the repeated rows and multiples that you need to complete whatever project. This is wide enough to be a scarf as it is. And um, if I kept going to approximately 70 to 80 inches in length, it would make a great scarf. So I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, bye for now.